If you are self-employed, you must submit two or two three tax declarations. Each of us must submit the income tax declaration, and almost all of us must submit a value-added tax declaration. Additionally, those of us who are business owners must also submit a trade tax declaration. The problem with all these tax declarations is that while there are many tools available for making tax declarations, most of these tools are not suitable for the self-employed. And this leads to the fact that most self-employed individuals somehow have to struggle with Elster Online. Elster Online is the free portal from the tax office. However, it is not particularly user-friendly, which is why you will also find a whole series of Elster Online tutorials on this channel. And I hope that with these tutorials, you will actually be able to complete your tax declaration. I have linked all the tutorials in the video description below in case you are interested. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There is a tool that is better than Elster Online, which is more intuitive and allows self-employed individuals to actually complete the income tax declaration, the trade tax declaration, and the value added tax declaration. I am talking about Wisotex. I am. You will also find a link to Wisotax in the video description below. I have been using Wisotax myself for several years. And in this video, we will take a look at the value added tax declaration in WISO tax. That means I will share my screen with you and we will simply click through a value added tax declaration together. We are currently in the dashboard of WISO tax. WISO tax is essentially free. So creating an account with WISO tax is at least free. If you just want to submit the tax declaration, you will pay $46 if you want to use WISO tax for one time use. And if you subscribe to WISO tax on an annual basis, you pay $10 less, so you pay $36. In my opinion, this is a sensible investment, and I would always recommend the subscription because as a self-employed individual, you cannot choose whether to submit a tax declaration. You must submit a tax declaration. That's why you already know today that if you are self-employed next year, you will also have to submit a tax declaration next year. Therefore, there is nothing wrong with committing to this software today. It will always get easier in the following years anyway because you can simply duplicate the previous year, undoubtedly. You can transfer the data, and these are also gross amounts, which means you have a VAT deduction. In the end, you pay 30 for WISO tax. All further information can be found behind the link below in the video description. Here we see the dashboard, and on the left side, we can see the tax declarations that we can make with WISO tax, such as income tax. Here we see the value added tax declaration. Here I see that I can transfer the data if there is data available to transfer. In my case, that is not the case. This is exactly the time savings I was talking about. From the second year on, it usually goes significantly faster. We will now create a value added tax declaration in Wiseo Tax for the first time together and simply click on create new tax declaration. And with that, the tax declaration is basically opened. And on the left side, we can expand the menu. This menu outlines the process. We have ahead of us, we need to provide information about our company, and then we must fill out the value added tax declaration. Then we can review everything again, maybe make a few suggestions on what I should do differently, and then I can submit everything directly in Wiseo Tax, saving myself all the drama surrounding Elster Online. And when I expand everything, I can also see the menu in detail. This means I provide general information in the value added tax declaration, taxable sales, and I can then expand everything here. We will look at this step by step together, and we start here in the middle, where it also says that the first step is to collect the data. So let's get started right away. I believe the first points are ones you can fill out and answer better than I can. This is about entering your first name, your last name, your company, the type of business and so on. There is always a small question mark here. If you have a question, you can click on it. In my personal experience, the help texts for the value added tax declaration and the trade tax declaration are not quite accurate. Well, for the income tax declaration, you really get good tips with Wiseo Tax but not so much for the business tax declarations indeed. Well, the help that is sometimes offered is really very, very thin, but that's why I'm making this video. Here, in terms of the type of business, it is simply about briefly describing one's self-employment. So here, whether retail or wholesale, type of production operation, type of service operation, or if you are a freelancer, you just need to briefly describe what you do. I wrote author because I have written a startup guide for the self-employed. For those unaware, find all the information about it below in the video description. And this book I sell, and that's why I am an author and freelance author. And here I would write, I am an author, respectively. Writers. Where's the company's registered office, in Germany or abroad? The address, phone number, and so on. We see here by the asterisk that this is not necessarily required, meaning you do not have to provide a phone number, a fax number, or an email address. A website does not need to be entered either. 
I must honestly say that I always fill out the phone number, meaning the smartphone, the mobile number, and the email address, in the hope that the tax office will simply call me if they have questions, rather than sending me letters and forcing me to send letters back and forth. I would prefer to receive questions via email or over the phone. I prefer this to sending letters back and forth, a personal preference. At least it's not mandatory. You can simply leave all the fields that don't have an asterisk empty, and that's 2001. And with that, we are actually done with this section. At least we see the option to expand everything here. What we do, and this is something you should actually do, is sadly not intuitive because when I click on continue here, I land directly in the value added tax declaration. In this context, I haven't filled out some fields here, especially the question about the responsible tax office. It is only about the tax office for the business location. In most cases, for those of you watching the videos, when you work from home, it is the exact same tax office. If your business is located in a different municipality and another tax office handles you, you should enter the tax number from the tax office of your business location here, select the correct tax office, because the value added tax declaration is a business tax declaration, unlike the income tax declaration. The income tax declaration is considered a private tax declaration. Once you have entered into that, we move on to the next section. You need to expand it again and provide information about whether someone helped you with the tax declaration. I strongly suspect that this is not filled out very often in WISO tax because what do you do here? You simply fill in the tax advisor. If a tax advisor assisted in your tax declaration, you aren't doing it yourself. If you're a tax advisor, you're likely not using WISO tax to prepare your tax declaration. But for formality, this information is also requested on Elster Online. This means you must provide this information once because the tax office requires it and here you would have the opportunity. I assume no one will fill this out. And with that, you have basically filled out the master data, your general information. Now we will proceed to the actual value added tax declaration. And here, unfortunately, everything is not expanded at first. This means we will expand the individual areas that we will work through together and first dive into the general information. Here, you need to answer a few questions regarding self employment. PO box address, corrected tax declaration. It can happen, you submit your tax declaration and then somehow find additional receipts and think, oh, I need to correct this somehow. Then you select yes here and the tax office will know that the tax declaration that was previously submitted should be overwritten. Then you need to answer whether you were resident abroad. This should not be the case in most instances. Whether the refund amount, that is if a refund occurs in the value added tax declaration, should be offset. It could be offset, for example, with the next value added tax declaration of the current year or with another type of tax. So, for example, refund from VAT declaration could be offset against income tax payment for 2021. Click here. My personal experience is that the tax office does this quite often, even if you don't want them to. And here, with the next question, you can provide specific information if you follow certain legal interpretations in your tax declaration and so on. This all needs to be justified in some way and must be communicated to the tax office. To be honest, this is really a nerdy field and you should be very knowledgeable about it, knowing which topics you are currently dealing with, which legal opinions you are following and which ones you are not and so on. I strongly assume that most of you will just click no. And if there are different legal opinions, then hopefully you have an advisor by your side who can tell you how to fill this out properly and what you can write in each section. What the tax office needs to know are the next two fields. Specifically, you were fully self-employed for the entire last year, which is the year 2023, because it may be that you only started your business last year or gave up your self-employment. In that case, you would click no here and indicate the period during which you were self-employed. This is all about the year 2023. You don't need to write that you were founded on March 16th, 1998. Nobody cares about that. It's only about 2023. This means, if in doubt, you just write January 1st. By the 15th of August, if you stopped your self-employment on the 15th of August, or conversely, if you started your business that year. And then there is a very central question about your revenue from the previous year. We are now preparing the tax declaration for 2023. However, it is asking for the revenue for 2022. And the specific question is whether it was below. And that's for the simple reason that if you click yes here, you have the option to choose the small business regulation and then you don't pay any value added tax. Then you actually still have to submit a value added tax declaration, at least for the year 2023. At this point, there is great relief for small business owners. The requirement to file the value added tax declaration for small businesses has been abolished. The last value added tax declaration to submit for small businesses is the value added tax declaration for 2023. You are essentially doing a final lap here. 
After that, you won't have to do it anymore. As long as you fall under the small business regulation, you won't have to submit value added tax declarations anymore. For 2023, you still need to do everything. If you say here, no, my revenue was below. You can of course voluntarily waive the small business regulation, for example, here, and then everything is settled. But if you say no, you haven't, then you need to specify the revenue from the year 2022, which is from the year before last, and the revenue from last year, for example, such as with that, you have completed everything. Not quite everything, as we still need to cover a few areas, and reverse charge is still relevant. And the reverse charge principle can lead to you, as a small business owner, paying value added tax. See a detailed video in the description. If you've never heard of this before, you should definitely check it out. But essentially, as a small business owner, you have almost completed the value added tax declaration up to this point. And as a final question, you need to specify again how you calculate your value added tax. So based on agreed or received payments. When is the value added tax due in your case? Then when you write the invoice or the money arrives in your account, that is the difference between accrued and actual taxation. If you've never heard of this, be sure to check the video description as well. I have also recorded a separate video where I explained everything. I strongly assume that most of you have received payments. 2001. Received payments mean that you only have to remit the value added tax once the money has arrived in your account. This means if you invoiced in December 2023, but it was paid in January 2024, it need not appear in the value added tax declaration because you received the money in 2024. That means you would have to report this value added tax in the 2024 tax declaration and this is taxable. You can always take advantage of this taxation based on received payments if your revenue in the previous year was below euro. 2001, that's a very ambitious figure for a sole proprietorship, at least that's what I can say from experience. I've seen a few accounting records before. Breaking through in revenue as a sole proprietorship is possible, but then you truly belong to the top, top, top self-employed individuals out there. With that, we have completed the general information and can move on to the next topic. And again, the intuition to simply click on next is unfortunately indeed incorrect. We are going to dive into this topic here, open it up again and discuss the taxable revenues in depth. And here we will now provide additional information about the revenues we generated in the year 2023. And that naturally raises the question, where do you actually indeed get these numbers from? And there are essentially two options. The first option is that you have already done bookkeeping during the year and possibly even submitted value-added tax declarations on a monthly or quarterly basis. You cannot choose this. It is determined by the tax office. It always depends on how much value-added tax you paid in the previous year. Overall, it tells you to make a monthly VAT declaration or a quarterly VAT declaration. You have already done that during the year. For quarterly VAT declarations, you have already submitted VAT declarations for the first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, and fourth quarter. The value added tax declaration itself is nothing more than a summary of all the value added tax advance returns that you have submitted throughout the year 2023. So if you have worked correctly throughout the year, there shouldn't be anything coming out of this value added tax declaration. Normally, there shouldn't be any additional payment due. Once you have submitted this value added tax declaration, you will have transmission protocols. It doesn't really matter whether you used an accounting program or did it through Elster Online. You will then have transmission protocols that essentially look like this. These transfer protocols actually contain everything you need to include in your value added tax declaration now. There are taxable sales at a tax rate of 19%, along with amounts at other tax rates in the assessment basis and how much tax that has generated. Here, there are details about revenues that were not subject to value added tax, such as non taxable other services according to BUSTG. Here you have the deductible input tax amounts and then the advance payment. And this is also the advance payment that you would typically have paid while submitting this value added tax declaration. And you simply take these amounts. You then go in here at WISO tax and you can see, for example, taxable delivery and other services. If you click here once, you will see delivery and other services at 19%, which we just saw. You click on that once. Then I would suggest that when you have these transfer protocols, you simply go to simply enter the total contribution and take the amount you have from the transfer protocols. It's important that you, of course, add up all four quarters. What you can do is click here on supportive input and simply write in here 2001 for quarter one, two, three, four, and the respective amount, for example. First quarter, then you write the amount here that you had for deliveries and other services at 19%. Let's move over. This is the amount 5864. We will simply and very carefully and precisely copy this 
and can then write it right here accurately. And then you can transfer the second quarter, third quarter, and fourth quarter here, which makes it a bit easier for you to transfer everything from the transfer protocols. The prerequisite is, of course, that there have been no subsequent changes made to the value added tax declarations as you submitted them. Otherwise, you will of course need to enter these changes here again, meaning if you found an invoice after you submitted a value added tax declaration and you did not correct that value added tax declaration, then you must enter this additional information here again because it is not yet reflected in these transmission protocols. If you haven't submitted a value added tax declaration during the year, then you definitely go to the supportive input and simply enter the amounts here. You can easily get these amounts from your accounting software. This means that if you have maintained ongoing bookkeeping, you can always check in the evaluation how much revenue you have generated from deliveries and other services at 19%. Then you take the amount here and enter the assessment basis here. It's important to note that you should enter the net amount here and not the amount that has actually been transferred to you. If you haven't done any bookkeeping during the year, you can simply list all the invoices from the year 2021 that you issued for deliveries and other services. Other services is the VAT term for services. So in summary, you can actually say that you simply write all services at 19% here. And if you issued 10 invoices in that year, you just list the 10 individual invoices here, and then you have everything done. And you do all of this, not just for 19%, but also for 7% and for the sales at 0%. And once you have done that, you have indeed successfully and completely completed the section on taxable deliveries and other services. You also do this for non-monetary value transfers. What are non-monetary value transfers? Non-monetary value transfers occur whenever you take a value from the business and do not pay any compensation for it. It sounds very complicated. What does it mean in plain English? For example, if you have a vehicle in the company assets and you also use this company car for private purposes, you need to somehow calculate the private usage share and you do this using the 1% method or the logbook method. There are many, many videos on this, which you can find in the video description below. And there you determine a value and this value is essentially the assessment of the private use of your company equipment, meaning your company vehicle. And this is a non-cash benefit because you did not pay yourself for being able to use and have access to your company vehicle such as it is. But the thing is taxable because when operating the car, acquiring the car, you had a deduction for input tax. So you reclaimed the value added tax. And if you are now using the car privately, then it is mathematically at least absolutely logical to say that you are effectively paying back the value added tax for that portion of private use. You don't pay them back. Instead, you simply tax the non-cash benefit. In this case, it would be considered a service subject to 19% VAT in the taxation of company cars. And of course, it is also possible that there are other services, for example, deliveries at 7%. You run a grocery store and every evening you simply just take a little bit of fresh vegetables and whatever else you would like to eat at home. If you prepare this at home, serve it to yourself and eat the whole thing, then you have made a non-gratuitous delivery because you have simply taken assets from the business for yourself. Food items are subject to a VAT rate of approximately 7%, which means you would document the value of what you have taken out and record it for deliveries. Hopefully you have somehow documented this in some way during the ongoing bookkeeping. You just have to document it because you need to declare it here once and actually pay value added tax on these withdrawals. Then there are two fields that I won't go into in depth, namely revenues from agricultural and forestry operations. In my experience, most of you are neither farmers nor foresters. If there is anyone among you who needs to enter something here, feel free to leave a comment under this video and I will gladly assist you in the comment section. And then there is a relic of the past here, namely sales at different tax rates, such as 5 and 16%. During the corona pandemic, the VAT rate was temporarily reduced for six months from 7% to 5% and from 19% to 16%. And of course, these sales also had to be reported. However, since you only specify the assessment basis up here and it builds on that and automatically calculates 19%, you had to indicate it separately here. But that was quite a while ago, and I strongly assume that this field is not filled out very often anymore today. And I assume that this will disappear from the value added tax declaration, as this exception regulation is quite some time ago. And then there are two fields that are honestly more of an exception. I still want to address them because I can read from the comments that some people have this particular situation more often. This concerns the tax, or rather, tax on received advance payments after changing the taxation method. It works like this. If you were a small business owner and at some point switched to regular taxation, then you will charge value added tax and simply remit it, entering it here at the top. However, if you require advance payments in your self-employment and requested an advance payment at a time when you were a small business owner, 
but this advance payment was for a service you provided at a time when you were no longer a small business owner, then you actually need to charge value-added tax on it because you must always indicate the value-added tax that applies at the time you perform the service. It may sound a bit complicated. Let me simplify it a bit. I am a photographer, and as a photographer, I require a deposit. This means that if someone books, for example, a wedding shoot six months in advance, I want to have assurance that this job will actually come through. That's why I take a deposit at the time of commissioning, at the time of booking. Later, there is the wedding. I go there, I do the photo shoot, I write my final invoice, and in this final invoice, I deduct the deposit. Many business models exist among photographers. If I got the booking in late 2022 and I was a small business in 2022, then I will issue a deposit invoice without value-added tax because I am a small business. And then, in 2023, I might no longer be a small business owner. And in 2023, there is the photo shoot. After the photo shoot, I'll create an invoice with VAT as I'm no longer a small business owner. Currently, I have the deposit invoice without VAT and the final invoice with VAT. And in such situations, I actually have to retroactively recalculate the value-added tax for the down payment. If that is indeed the case for you, then you actually write this additional tax as it is called here, in fact. The same applies if the tax rate has changed, e.g. from 5 to 7% or from 16 to 19%. It has been a while, but it is exactly the same construct. Then you write this tax amount in here. With that, we are actually done for the normal sales right now. That means we click right here on Finish and can then move on to the next section. The next area is the most pleasant one. The next area is namely the deductible input tax. The deductible input tax for the year 2001 is the input tax that my suppliers and service providers have invoiced me and that I can now offset. So far, we have calculated the value added tax, which is a large amount, namely the value added tax that I have paid to my suppliers and service providers, which is called input tax, and I can enter that here. We see here, there are some fields that we can fill out. First of all, input the input tax amounts from invoices from other companies. These are the regular invoices. I will take another look at the transmission protocol. This is the amount we have down here. Deductible input tax amounts, input tax amounts from invoices from other companies. That means I take the value from all the transfer protocols and either add it up or write down each quarter 1, 2, 3, 4, or the months 1, 2, 3, 26 to 12, or just the individual invoices. What is confusing, and this is due to the form's illogical nature, is that we have written the assessment basis for the sales. We have not included anything related to the tax, but rather we have actually written the net amounts. Here it is completely different. Here we do not enter the net amounts from the invoices, but instead we enter the tax amounts. That means we are not writing anything else here, but really just the tax amount that was stated on the invoices I received. Additionally, there are a whole range of tax amounts that I can have reimbursed. For example, Intra-community acquisitions are subject to value-added tax, but when I pay this value-added tax, I can actually reclaim that amount directly as input tax. I can enter it directly here, and so it becomes a zero invoice, so to speak. If I make an intra-community acquisition, I actually have to remit this 19% value-added tax. We'll get to that field shortly. However, I can also claim this value-added tax as input tax at the same time, and I will enter it here. Simply put, everything looks just like it always does. Indeed, the same applies not only to intra-community acquisitions, but also to acquisitions that come from a country outside the EU. Then it is no longer called intra-community acquisition. Instead, it is called import. And I pay import VAT on that. The principle works completely identically. I would skip the next field. It is a special case related to outsourcing, which means the whole topic of value-added tax storage, etc. If this is relevant to you when you are involved in e-commerce, take a look at this as you may need to enter the input tax amounts here. What some of you might have are B revenues from the year 2001, specifically whenever you are a customer. And we are talking about B in relation to the reverse charge procedure. And the reverse charge procedure actually works quite similarly to intra-community acquisitions, except that it involves services. Specifically, it is the case that if I, for example, if I am a customer of a company from the EU abroad, then I have to pay value-added tax as a customer. This is the reverse of the tax liability, also known as reverse charge, and this is regulated in B. So practically, I advertise on Google, and then I pay Google, and I receive an invoice from Google, which does not include value-added tax. 
What is stated on the invoice, however, is that the reverse charge procedure is applied. This means that for those payments I make to Google, I actually have to pay an additional 19% to the German tax office. But if I am subject to value-added tax, or since I am entitled to deduct input tax, I can essentially claim the $190 I paid back as input tax. This means that for me, it is basically a zero-sum calculation. And I actually write these input tax amounts down here. And this brings us to the major disadvantage of small business owners. Small businesses are not finished with the whole reverse charge topic, as small businesses can take advantage of reverse charge services, like spending on Google. They still have to pay $190 to the tax office on top of that, though they are small business owners. What they are not allowed to do is write the input tax amount here, because small businesses are not entitled to deduct input tax. This means that small businesses actually pay value-added tax on reverse charge services. This is not written down here, but we will get to that shortly. It is important to note that small businesses are generally not allowed to write anything here. In the entire area of input tax, they are not allowed to write anything. There are average rates for certain corporations, groups. I will skip that, as these videos are for self-employed. Then there is a special case regarding intra-community deliveries of new vehicles, more of an exception, and input tax amounts from intra-community triangular transactions. Triangular transactions are a complicated topic, and I will link a detailed explanation for you in the video description below. The whole topic is relevant for you if you are involved in e-commerce and doing drop shipping. And once you understand that, you will know that you can enter the input tax amounts that arise here. You don't wait until preparing the value-added tax declaration to do this, but do it when you write and get the invoice, an important part of your calculation. And with that, we have indeed actually reached the end of what I would call the normal business activities. As we can see on the left side, there are still many other details we can provide, but in the first step, we have now entered all the taxable sales and the deductible input tax amounts. That means, I would say, we have completed the basic accounting, and for most of you, this probably already covers 90 to 95% of the information. Of course, we will take another look at all the exceptions that one should be aware of, not every exception, but everything that can certainly occur. Let's take a look together. I don't include the correction of the input tax deduction. Clicking it states the initial use of the property, meaning properties, parts of properties, buildings, and so on. That means this is very much about the real estate sector. I hope you have a tax advisor by your side if that is relevant for you. And this is also my urgent appeal. If the amounts are very, very large, involving properties, cars, and so on, then talk to a tax advisor beforehand, because there is a lot that can go wrong. You can end up paying too much tax, or, to put it positively, you can also save a significant amount on taxes if you do everything correctly. But to be honest, a general YouTube tutorial here on YouTube might not actually be the right fit. Definitely. Therefore, it is highly recommended. If you are involved with real estate, you should seek a tax advisor who can provide you with guidance in this regard. In my experience, this is very well invested money. The next point, however, may actually be relevant for many of you. We are talking about intra-community acquisitions and tax-free sales. I have already mentioned the whole topic of intra-community acquisitions and indeed both imports. And intra-community acquisitions are always taxable for the customer. This means that the customer must, or if you are a business customer, you must pay value-added tax as a customer. You can also claim this value-added tax back. We have looked at this with the input tax, but of course we have not yet entered the value-added tax anywhere. You do this here for intra-community acquisitions and intra-community triangular transactions, subject to VAT, in 2001. This means that if you purchase something from a company in another EU country, it is considered an intra-community acquisition and you can enter it here, thereby also accounting for the value-added tax. It is important that you do this, and it is also important that you enter the same figures here as you have already entered as input tax amounts in the input tax section. This means that everything has to fit together because if it doesn't, either Wiseo Tax will complain, meaning the software will raise an issue, or if the software doesn't complain, then the tax office will complain because it simply doesn't add up. You can only claim the input tax that you have actually paid. Therefore, the value added tax on intra community acquisitions must, of course, be exactly the same amount as the input tax from intra community acquisitions that you want to claim. I think that is relatively logical, and this applies to import deliveries. This applies to intra-community acquisitions and of course also to B. And here we also see tax debtors according to USEND B. That means if you are a customer, let's remember the Google example, then you are the recipient of services as the tax debtor according to paragraph 13B of the German Value Added Tax Act. Then you simply click here and write down that you have placed ads on Google for a value of X 
and the tax will be calculated based on that. And you actually have to do this as a small business owner. So you really have to make this declaration as a small business owner and you actually have to pay the value added tax for the year 2001. And then there are three exciting fields down here, specifically tax-free sales with input tax deduction. There are certain sales that are tax-free for you, such as intra-community supplies. We have already discussed that as a customer, you must pay value added tax when you make an intra-community acquisition. And it would somehow be unfair if the supplier also had to pay value added tax for the intra-community delivery. However, that is not the case. The whole thing is tax-free. This means that if you carry out intra-community deliveries when you have a business customer from another EU country, then it is an intra-community delivery, and this intra-community delivery is tax-free. And you still need to enter all of this here once to inform the tax office that you made this revenue, and so that the tax office knows that this revenue is tax-free. That means you do not pay value-added tax. Your customer pays value-added tax because for your customer, it is considered an intra-community acquisition, which is taxable in other EU country. Because the whole intra-community delivery and the reverse charge procedure is regulated throughout the EU, this means that the other EU countries have similar regulations. It may be stated in a different paragraph, but basically it is regulated in a very identical manner. And then there are a few other sales that are tax-exempt, for which you still have a right to deduct input tax. Here we see, for example, export deliveries and processing of goods for export. Or here there are still revenues in the sense of the offshore tax agreement, etc. We can see that these are probably more exceptions, but intra-community deliveries do occur relatively frequently, and you can enter them here. However, there are also sales that are tax-exempt, and that is the disadvantage. They have a prohibition on the deduction of input tax on the cost side. These are the tax-free sales without input tax deduction, because in the case of intra-community supplies, you pay the input tax when purchasing, but the entire sale is tax-free. In other words, if you have a lot of joint deliveries, you will always have many input tax amounts in your value-added tax declaration and never any output tax. This leads to the fact that you will typically receive money back from the tax office. In the case of most tax-exempt sales, you do not have the option to deduct input tax. This means that while your invoice is legally without value-added tax, you also do not have the opportunity to claim input tax deductions on the cost side. For example, with doctors, insurance brokers, private residential landlords, and banks, many banking services are actually frequently exempt from value added tax, as are midwives and so on. All of this is covered in the fourth section. If you are unsure the service you are filling out is exempt from value added tax, see section four of the Value Added Tax Act and read it. It is a long paragraph, but the tax declaration is structured in the same way. Up here we see revenues according to section 12 of the Value Added Tax Act, which pertains to the rental of properties, mainly the rental of private living space. You simply enter that here. But in the next fields, you need to specify the number. Your revenue is exempt from VATI. This applies to doctors, midwives, insurance brokers, and so on. Certain teaching activities are indeed exempt from value-added tax. This means you need to once have the number. Look up the Value-Added Tax Act, for example, number 4, item 8, and write that in there, and then you write your revenues here. This means you actually have to research the legal basis once. To be frank, these are the majority of tax-exempt sales. This means that most of the sales exempt from value-added tax are without input tax deduction. You have additional information about sales down here. This is a quite important field. Many self-employed individuals have this, and this is interesting. Taxable revenues of the supplying entrepreneur for which the recipient of the service owes taxes according to paragraph 5 of the Value Added Tax Act. The recipient of the service is liable for the VATI, reverse charge procedure. You enter the reverse charge services here, but importantly, this concerns the reverse charge services domestic. In fact, there is reverse charge also for cleaning companies and construction companies. This means that if this applies to you, you should enter the revenue here, the reverse charge services that you have across borders. So if, for example, you are advising a company from Austria, then the place of service is in Austria and the reverse charge procedure applies, meaning that the place of service is not in Germany and therefore you do not pay value added tax. You actually need to indicate this here as well. Specifically, here regarding non-taxable other services according to section B, sentence one number, two of the value added tax act. Here you write in the reverse charge services. So for example, your services, your consulting services, or if you are a YouTuber and upload your videos to YouTube, then your customer, in this case, is a company from another EU country, namely Google, which is based in Ireland. Then you write your revenues here. You do not have to pay value added tax on this because the value added tax is paid by your customer. In this case, Google in Ireland. 
as per my example from this video. There are similar situations where the place of service is not in Germany, and these are non-taxable services, so the remaining non-taxable revenues, you write them down here. There are also some quite wild regulations regarding telecommunications around USAND, as well as broadcasting and television services. Here, whether a company has been sold in its entirety, I hope you have a tax advisor, and if not, please find one. You will find a link in the video description below, where I can gladly help you find the right tax advisor, but you should not do this alone. To be honest, those were the most important details. This means we click on finish once and have completed this section, and thus also this entire area of specifics, so to speak including all intra-community acquisitions, tax-free sales, and so on. And with that, we return to the overview page 2021 at the highest level. Then we see the Annex UN, which only needs to be filled out by companies that are not based in Germany. Therefore, we will simply leave the Annex UN out here in case you need it at some point. You can also do this with Weasel Tax. You probably won't need it so soon, but just in case, you can find it here. What is exciting, and honestly the last point, is the advance payment and the calculation of the tax to be paid. Because we have now provided all the information, there's little to enter initially. 2001, we are now seeing a long calculation. So, the value added tax on taxable deliveries and other services, on all services related to community acquisitions, intra-community triangular transactions, value added tax under reverse charge, and the value added tax with all these outsourcing deliveries, we calculate all of that together, then subtract all the input tax amounts and so on. This gives you the total value added tax burden for a year. And this value added tax burden is of course not the amount you have to pay now, because in most cases you have already submitted monthly or quarterly value added tax advance returns during the year and made advance payments accordingly. You can also enter all of this here. That means you should indeed check how much value added tax you have actually paid for the year 2023. These are the amounts you will also find in the transfer protocols, like the advance payments for value added tax. These are the amounts and also the amounts on the bank statement. This means how much value added tax have you paid to the tax office, either for all 12 months or for all four quarters. And then you write down the advance payment amount that you have paid in advance here. And at the very bottom, you have a result specifically regarding what still needs to be paid to the tax office. So this is simply an amount. And if you have a negative amount here, it means tax refund. Now you can review everything once again in the next step and check for plausibility with WISO tax. And then you can directly submit from WISO tax to the tax office and ensure everything is correct. Important note regarding value added tax. For value added tax, you should not wait for a notice. Instead, you calculate the amount yourself. And if there is an additional payment due, for example, if it turns out that you still need to pay $300 in value added tax to the tax office, you should proactively transfer this amount yourself. You have four weeks to do this. You will get a notice, but the process is different from the income or trade tax declaration, where you first get a notice stating what to pay. For the value added tax declaration, you calculate, submit, and transfer the amount yourself without any request. And if a refund comes out, you don't have to do anything, you will receive the money eventually when the tax office has processed the value added tax declaration. I hope this video was helpful to you and that you have successfully completed your value added tax declaration. If you haven't done it yet and are now thinking that WISO tax looks quite nice, take a look at the video description where you will find the link. And if you have any questions about value added tax, self-employment, writing invoices, or Oh, whatever else, why so tax, no matter what the question is, just write it down in the comment section below and I will be happy to help you. And if you're looking for another tool, a bank account, accounting software, a tax advisor or whatever, then check out the video description below or just click directly here. And now you could simply just watch one of the other videos on this channel to wind down and relax. We now have almost 700 videos on the topics of taxes, accounting and finance for self-employed individuals.